On 5 June 1963, President John F. Kennedy visited White Sands Missile Range to view a special exercise demonstrating the might of missiles tested at this national range. Mr. President, I can't begin to tell you how happy we are to have you here with us today. As you know, White Sands Missile Range is a national range operated by the U.S. Army. The users of the range are the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and more recently, NASA. A few minutes ago, you had an opportunity to see some of the Air Force personnel at Holloman Air Force Base. Here in the stands before you are Army, Navy, and NASA personnel and their families. They are thrilled to have you here, and I'm sure they treasure hearing a few words from you. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. General, Mr. Vice President, Senator Russell, Congressman Morris and Montoya, Governor, ladies and gentlemen, I want to express a very warm appreciation to all of you for your generous welcome and for coming out to greet us. The Vice President uh, spoke this morning at the Naval Academy and has come here. I went with some members of the Congress to the Air Force Academy in Colorado, visited the North American Defense Center in Colorado, and now come here. And I think all of us who leave Washington, D.C., with all of its uh, complexities, and all of its diverse views, and all of its areas of decision, get uh, tremendously heartened by a visit to those of you who are working in the field and who can see day by day measurable progress which strengthens our country and those associated with it. This must give you the greatest possible satisfaction because never in history has so much depended upon one people. And I think never in history have one people been so willing to assume that responsibility. Here in this uh, ancient part of the United States, settled uh, before all the rest, where so much has happened in a concentrated period in the last 20 years, which has marked all the kinds of changes in war, the means of defense, and now the movement into outer space. And all of you are a vital part of it. What you do here, far away from Washington, far away from some of our great capitals, far away from the many countries which depend upon us, what you do here, what progress you make, what dedication uh, you demonstrate, makes a significant difference to the security of our country and to those who depend upon us. That is an almost unique role to play. And I know that you feel the same sense of pride in your chance, in your time, in your day to play a part in the life of the great republic as do all of us whose responsibilities are somewhat different. I want to express my thanks to all of you. We admire what you're doing. And even more important, we're very grateful to all of you.
Demonstrations of eight different missile systems were slated for presentation during the following two hours of the President's visit. The President and his party arrived first at Army Launch Area Number 1. The initial demonstration was of the Army's highly reliable Honest John rocket, originally proved at White Sands and now in place throughout the free world. This rugged and simply constructed rocket can be fitted with various types of warheads, including nuclear ones. In today's firing, a warhead containing white phosphorus was to be tested as a part of the program for continuing improvement of the system. Before the actual firing, the presidential party was briefed on the nature of the weapon system and the purpose of the test. Honest John was on target. Almost immediately, the next missile was towed before the viewing stand. This was Little John, a light, readily mobile, free flight rocket designed primarily for use of airborne troops. In fact, the Little John missile to be fired was flown in, rapidly unloaded, moved to the firing site, and quickly emplaced. Here was graphic proof of how well this weapon fulfills its intended purpose. Next in line, the Army Hawk, compact package of lethal lightning. A briefing officer explained how the Hawk system spells death for low-flying attacking aircraft. The Army Sergeant surface-to-surface -surface guided missile was the last weapon to be tested at launch area number one. This largely automatic missile system, employing a highly effective solid propellant motor, is now replacing the corporal missile in the field. In only a few minutes, the presidential party arrived at launch area number two, where four missile systems were scheduled for demonstration and test firing. An army Nike Hercules was to go against a target of equal power and speed, another Nike Hercules missile. The distinguished visitors were briefed on the general plan of the test. Displayed next was the Pershing ballistic missile, one of the newer weapons in the Army's modern arsenal. Field artillery troops demonstrated the speed with which this large, high-powered missile can be made ready for firing under tactical-type conditions. A number of Pershing missiles, now in the final stages of testing, will soon be fired from off-range sites for impact within the boundaries of White Sands missile range. Next, the U.S. Navy test-fired the ship-to-air Talos-guided missile. Last to be demonstrated was the Army's Nike Zeus, the nation's only anti-missile missile under advanced development.
At this point, representatives of firing units from Fort Sill, Fort Bliss, and White Sands march to the front of the viewing stand. Major E.V. Creel, Fort Sill, greeted the president and presented to him a scale model of the Sergeant missile, the weapon these troops have been trained to use anywhere at any time it may be needed. Among the viewers present were such dignitaries as Senators Meacham, Russell, Thurmond, and Yarborough, Congressman Foreman, Hollifield, Montoya, Morris, Rostenkowski, Secretary of the Army, Vance, Secretary of the Navy, Court, Governor Campbell of New Mexico, and Generals Wheeler, Adams, Jark, and Ryan. Vice President Johnson was presented a plaque from the Army's 1st Pershing Battalion. Before departing for the next stop on his itinerary, the President expressed his thanks to the troops who had conducted the demonstrations. These men had successfully fired seven missiles in rapid succession. Their commander-in-chief seemed pleased. 5 June 1963 was a significant day in the history of White Sands Missile Range where so much of modern technological progress has been made. This was the first time a president had honored the installation with a visit. His presence, that of the vice president and the other distinguished visitors, inspired the personnel of White Sands to even greater efforts in the future in carrying out a mission vital to our country's security.